know, the top secret program at Bletchley, you're trying to break the German Enigma machine. What makes you think that? It's the greatest encryption device in history, and the Germans use it for all major communications. If the Allies broke Enigma, well, <laughs> so turn into a very short war indeed. I was sent this script and said, yeah, this is a beautiful script, you have to read it. And I read it, and I just found out that I knew so little about him. I was shocked. Uh, I said, why, why wasn't this the man, you know, on the front cover of my history book when I was, when I was uh, at school? I mean, it's, it's the, it was such a fascinating story. I had been obsessed with the story of Alan Turing ever since I was a teenager. I had always been into computer programming and computer science, and I was a huge computer nerd when I was when I was growing up. And so, as you well know, among computer science folks, the sort of legend of Alan Turing looms very large. I was real fascinated about how he theorized a computer at the age of 23. How he, in many ways, theorized everything a computer can do and will ever be able to do. You you theorized a machine that could solve any problem. It didn't just do one thing, it did everything. It, it wasn't just programmable, it was reprogrammable. Hmm. Is that your idea behind Christopher? Well, human brains can compute large sums very quickly. Even Hugh can do that, but I want Christopher to be smarter. To make a calculation and then uh, to determine what to, to do next. What Alan Turing created really was the first digital computer. He was the forefather of what a lot of teenagers now hold in their hands as, as, and know as smartphones. You know, that wouldn't exist without the work that he's done. I mean, he was the first who actually thought about all of this, who, 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 who you know, uh, that, you know, machines can be programmable. You know, not, you know, not just do one thing, but do several things. There's a, there's a huge chunk in one of the main Alan Turing biographies which tries its best to break it down for you, how <laughs> this machine works. And I tried my hardest. I went over it a couple of times, actually. It's a good sort of 100 pages on it, and I went over it a few times. But um, but it was fun, you know, getting people at Bletchley Park to try and explain it to you as well. What did you do during the war? I worked in a radio factory. What did you really do during the war? Are you paying attention? One of the things I, I love so much about about this story and, and this film is that, you know, we don't we don't talk a lot about the sort of this sort of secret scientific and engineering history of the Second World War. The Second World War was was won by the mathematicians and the scientists as much as it was by by the soldiers on the front lines. And I think that's a terribly important story to hear. Six minutes. Is that even possible? No. It takes me eight. This isn't about crossword puzzles, it's about how one uh, approaches solving an impossible problem. Do you tackle the whole thing at once or divide it into small? You finished? Yes. Five minutes and 34 seconds. You said to do it in under six. I love the story of Joan Clark so much because she was someone who was this unbelievably smart woman um, living at a time when when smart women were not allowed to uh, uh, make use of their talents. And she was someone who sort of, when the war broke out, was for the first time in her life um, able to sort of be a mathematician and do the sort of work that, that she was capable of doing and, and, and got to sort of flourish in this time. And I hope that that is a flourishing that we, we get to see more of uh, today. To me, the movie is also a tribute to outsiders, to those who think differently, how important it is to have people who are not thinking normally, who actually have new ideas and can see the world in, in, in a new and different way. I mean, seeing the breadth of Turing's accomplishments was remarkable. He was not just a great mathematician, but he was a great chemist and a great biologist. And it was like there was no field unknown to him. And we can only imagine what wonders he would have accomplished in, in a thousand fields uh, had, he, had he gotten to live longer.